In this lesson, we are going to review operations on rational expressions. Rational expression is a quotient of two polynomials or other rational expressions. To simplify, multiply or divide rational expressions, we need to factor completely each numerator and denominator first and then reduce. So here's an example of a rational expression with multiplication and division. The first step that we're supposed to do is to factor every numerator and every denominator. The first one is already in a factored form, there's nothing to do here, so we can just copy it. And let's keep the long division bar. We are going to list all factors in the numerator. So the second numerator factors in a times a plus 4. Now, we have to take care of this division. Remember, to divide by a fraction means to multiply by its reciprocal. So we are going to write the denominator in the numerator. Let's prepare two brackets and see how can we factor the denominator. The first term is a and a for sure. The product is 20 and the difference is 1. So 4 and 5 should work. And 5 takes the middle sign, so it's plus 5 and minus 4. Let's look at the denominator. a squared is in a factored form. Here we have a difference of squares, so we factor into a minus 4 and a plus 4. And again, remember this division was converted into multiplication of reciprocal, so this numerator will be written in denominator. Again, prepare two brackets and try to factor a and a for sure. Product 15, sum 8. So 5 and 3 would work. Now when all this expression is in a factored form, what is left to do is just to reduce common factors. So for example, I can reduce this a with 1a from the bottom. Notice I'm just crossing the exponent, not the whole factor. Now I have a plus 4 here and there. I can reduce this bracket with that one or with this one. It doesn't really matter. So cross one of them. The other common factor is a minus 4 here and there. And finally, a plus 5 here and there. So that's all what we could cancel. And what's left is a simple fraction a plus 4 over a times a plus 3. Now it's a little bit more difficult to add or subtract rational expressions. How can we do that? The rule is first look at all your denominators because you are going to create common denominator and we are going to take the least common denominator. So in order to do that, let's factor all denominators. These two denominators are already in a factor form, but the middle one factors into x plus 6 and x minus 6. So how can we change the first fraction to gain this new common denominator. We did have the bracket x plus 6. What's new is x minus 6. So the numerator, the old numerator that was 2, it will have to be multiplied by the missing bracket. And this missing bracket is x minus 6. Now let's look at the next fraction. We have a minus and we have x plus 2. So we're going to write minus and make sure that you put a bracket for x plus 2. This part doesn't have to be multiplied by anything because the denominator didn't change. The following fraction, we have plus 5, and here we need to multiply by the missing bracket, and the missing bracket in this case is x plus 6. This is the important step to be careful and to do everything right. The rest of calculation shouldn't cause any trouble. We just open brackets, collect like terms, so that will be 2x minus 12 minus x minus 2 plus 5x and plus 30. Everything over the same common denominator, which is x plus 6 and x minus 6. One more step. Now collect like terms, so we have 1x from here plus 5, so it's 6x's. Then you have negative 14 plus 30, it's plus 16. And denominator x plus 6 and x minus 6. Now at that stage, it's a good idea to check if it's possible to simplify something. 
However, in this particular case, even if we will factor the 2 out, we'll end up with 3x plus 8, which is not the same as any of the factors from the denominator. So there's nothing else that we can actually do here. So we can leave it that way. In the following example, we have a little bit longer denominators. Again, what we need to do at first is to factor them. So prepare two brackets. And what we have here is x and x, product 10, sum negative 7, so it's negative 5 and negative 2. The second denominator factors into x, x, product 15, sum negative 8, so negative 5 and negative 3. The least common denominator will take each factor to the lowest exponent of its occurrence. So we have to have this one, this one, we don't need that one, and x minus 3 because it's different. So it's x minus 5, x minus 2, and x minus 3. Your common denominator must be an expression that is divisible by each of the previous denominators. So it has to contain all the factors of the previous denominators. And this one does. So when we have our common denominator, let's rewrite the first fraction. We had the 3x, and this 3x will have to be multiplied by the missing bracket. We had x minus 5, x minus 2. We need to multiply it by x minus 3. So x minus 3 here. The second fraction, we've got negative 3. And this needs to be multiplied by the missing bracket, which in this case is x minus 2. Now the rest of it is to open all the brackets, collect like terms, we know the drill. So 3x squared minus 9x minus 3x and plus 6 over our three brackets. And after collecting like terms, we have 3x squared minus 12x plus 6 over x minus 5 x minus 2, x minus 3. It's a good idea to check if we can possibly factor the numerator in a useful way. So for example, at first, if I take the 3 out, I've got x squared minus 4x plus 2 over the previous denominator because it's impossible to get product 2 and the sum 4. So now we know that it's impossible to reduce this any farther. So that will be the final answer. We also need to be able to simplify complex fractions. A complex fraction is a fraction that contains more than two levels. For example, here we have four levels. And to simplify it, it means to bring it to the common fraction with just two levels. We can simplify complex fractions using two different methods. One of them is to look at this main division bar and change this division into multiplication by the reciprocal. But this can be done only if the big numerator and the big denominator are single fractions. So the first thing that we'll have to do is to perform this subtraction, perform this addition, express the numerator and the denominator as a single fraction. So in the numerator, I'm looking at those two denominators and I'm finding out lowest common denominator, which is x times x plus 2. Therefore, the numerator of the first fraction, which originally was x plus 2, will have to be multiplied by the missing factor from the old denominator which is x plus 2. So x plus 2 times x plus 2 will be actually x plus 2 squared. Then we have a minus, and then we need to multiply 1 times x. Let's do the same in the big denominator. Again, look at those small denominators, put them together as a single lowest common denominator, and then the 5 will have to be multiplied by the missing factor, which is the bracket, and the x by the missing factor, which is just x. So x times x would be x squared. Now after that, we already have single fractions. We can just simplify them. 
So open this bracket, remember that when you square a binomial you end up with three terms, x squared plus double the product which is 4x plus 4 and then minus x. The denominator it's better to keep in a factored form. However, this main division bar can be already written as a multiplication of reciprocal. We just focus on the numerator and write it in the bottom because it will have to be flipped. So the top will be written in the bottom. So 5x plus 10 plus x squared and the bottom will be written in the top. Don't multiply through because it's already in a factored form and that's the desired form. As you notice, we have these two common factors that we can already reduce and also the bracket we can reduce. So the overall expression is getting easier. And if we carry on, simplify the numerator, we have x squared plus 3x plus 4. In the bottom, starting with the highest exponent, x squared plus 5x plus 10. So this is already a single fraction. Now we can still check possibility of factoring. However, it doesn't look like we can factor neither of the expressions because here we have product 4 and a sum 3. That's impossible. And over there you have product 10 and the sum 5. Again, it's impossible. So that will be the final answer. To illustrate the second method, we are taking exactly the same example. So you can see the difference in the two approaches. The second method is to take the big numerator and denominator and multiply them by the same expression. This expression will be lowest common denominator of these denominators, these four. So the lowest common denominator in our case is just x and x plus 2, which means we are going to multiply the top by x and x plus 2 and the bottom by x and x plus 2. Remember that in this method you always need to multiply by exactly the same expression because we don't want to change the value of this fraction. So let's multiply by LCD by distributing it to the first fraction. How would this work? To show the process I'm going to rewrite the first fraction in green and then multiply it by LCD which is x times x plus 2. The second fraction is minus 1 over x plus 2 which again will be multiplied by x and x plus 2. When we multiply a fraction by something, the something really goes into numerator. Everything over, and let's do the same to the denominator. So 5 over x times x and x plus 2, and x over x plus 2 times x and the bracket x plus 2. Now, it seems like it's a lot of writing here, but this can be done in your head. When you multiply, you're thinking about cancelling the x, and you will end up with just x plus 2 square. So you record x plus 2 square. Then you're cancelling the x plus 2, and you end up with negative x. In the bottom, we do the same. We cancel x, and we end up with 5 times x plus 2 plus we cancel x plus 2 and we end up with x squared. So it's really a nice method, especially if you could do this part in your mind. By distributing this factor to each term, reducing the x's and writing what's left, and again distributing it here and reducing x plus 2 and writing what's left, which is x squared in this case, similarly here. So at that point, what's left to do is to raise to the square, collect like terms, and simplify expression. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 4 minus x over 5x plus 10 plus x squared. So it's basically the same what we had before. x squared plus 3x plus 4 over x squared plus 5x plus 10. Please try both of these methods and just see which method works better for you. Another example of simplifying complex fraction 
is here, it's one plus some sort of complex fraction. Well, let's use this second method, copy the one first. And we may want to multiply the top and the bottom just by x. So you will see the advantage of the second method, multiplying by LCD, because it makes our calculation a lot faster. So x times one is just x, and here x times one again is x, and x times 1 over x is like x over x, so it's just 1. So you see we have just a single fraction here. However, we still need to add 1. So now we need to use common denominator, which is x plus 1, to add this 1. So 1 can be written as x plus 1 over x plus 1, right? That's your 1. Now it's plus the x from the fraction. So altogether we have 2x plus 1 over x plus 1. So this is a simple fraction. And the last example, here we have a hidden fraction under the negative exponent. I would suggest that first we'll rewrite this expression using actual fraction rather than negative exponent, because then you see clearly what you're dealing with. And again, if I multiply the big numerator and the big denominator by LCD, of those small denominators, which is x, y. I have to do the same to the denominator, it must be the same expression up and down. Then distributing it will cause that x, y will be divided by x, so you end up with just y. Over here, x, y divided by y will be just x. In the denominator, x, y will be at once reduced with x, y, so you have x minus y. So you see, this was quite complicated fraction, and just after one step, we could obtain pretty simple fraction that could still be simplified further if you notice that we could actually pull minus out of one of those expressions, either bottom or the top. Let's pull out minus out of the denominator. So I could write minus, and inside the bracket would be actually y minus x because I need to reverse signs. In the top, I still have y minus x, so that shows me that I have exactly the same factor, so we can reduce it. However, the answer is negative one, not one. So as soon as you see two exactly opposite expressions, you could actually even reduce it at that stage, except that we need to remember to give the answer as negative one rather than one.